I want to address dating in your 50s and beyond. Um, I'm going to be 61 soon and I'm still dating. And the thing is, it's not about whether the guy likes you or, you know, if you have the same interests. They're nice things. But what is really important is how you feel in the relationship. So if you're thinking of dating or if you are already dating and you're kind of not getting anywhere with it, ask yourself the question, how do I want to feel in a relationship? That might help you out. What is going on guys it is taylor the fiend back again and on today's episode we have a video here titled 17 minutes of older women raging because men are going their own way by insulin audits so without further ado let's jump right in don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments I wanted to revisit a post that I posted last year about putting yourself first. You might be experiencing a new chapter in your life, but take it from me, you can and you absolutely will survive if you're putting yourself first. This is a message that I wholeheartedly believe in, but I wanted to clarify something. Putting yourself first does not mean being shitty to other people. It's about finding balance. There are times in our lives where we do put other people before us because that's what you do in relationships. But again, it's about balance. So prioritizing self-care and setting boundaries are very important and your needs do matter. Filling your own cup is very vital because you can't pour from an empty cup but it's not an excuse to trample on other people's feelings and especially those that are in your inner circle. So yes, put yourself first, but remember the magic word, balance. I beg to differ. The reason isn't that complicated there, my advanced post walk -out You see, this putting yourself first attitude is exactly one of the big driving forces behind that female-led 70% plus divorce rate. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I hear some of these women speak, it's like you already know why they are single and why they are divorced. And the reason for it is because they're absolutely intolerable, right? They have to turn everything into some sort of scolding lesson that men need to learn. Yeah, thinking about me, the bulk of the time leads to breaking up a family. Sorry, ladies, just like I will admit, women are far better at picking up on the uh, subtleties of uh, body language than men. I will also say men are far more willing to sacrifice themselves and place their family's needs first long term. This little attempt to fix it by saying pick and choose when to place yourself first is about as believable as a woman is saying she is all about men's rights. Sorry, sister, but when you are in a serious relationship like marriage, for example, there is no picking and choosing. You both have to make sacrifices and compromises to make it work long term. I bet this is the uh, type of queen who will claim her ex was uh, toxic because he wouldn't let her put herself first above everyone else in the family. Liar! 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 Moving on. Can you guys imagine, right? Uh, probably some of you guys watching this don't have to imagine, but me, I don't have kids, right? But can you imagine you've got a child that you are responsible for, okay? And you're like, the, the child is hungry but you're really tired and you don't particularly want to feed the kid. So you're just like, you know, and it can't feed itself. Let's just say it's a really young child. And you're like, man, I just have to put myself first today. You know, I'm not really interested in looking after my family because I just need to make sure my cup is full. It's like, no, if you're a husband, if you're a wife, if you're a parent, you have obligations to other people. This whole like picking and choosing and, oh, I need to put myself first. It goes completely out the window when other people are dependent on you, particularly children, right? If you're someone who's the head of a household, right? Or you're, you know, trying to look after your children, you can't just go, well, some days I want the, some, you know, the responsibility and then other days I just need to make sure my cup is full. This is not how it works, okay? This is a full-time gig. This is, not, this is why we have vows and this is why those vows are so serious. And none of these people take vows seriously. Till death do us part, in sickness and in health. These people just treat it like it's a casual part-time job that they can just walk in and out of because they feel like it. And then they wonder why they're single and they're like 50 years of age.
through this whole spiritual healing growing journey, I really thought I had to be alone to do it, right? I get involved with someone and the dynamic changes. Here's what I thought. I thought because in the past when I've been in a relationship, it was created through a trauma bond. So we had this trauma and we would talk about the trauma and that bonded us. And so I put it in the category of, oh no, this is no good. You can't talk about your pain and your suffering and the dragons, for example, behind you because that's a trauma bond. No, here's what I didn't realize. And I'm only sharing this in case other people were in the same headspace as me. If it's obvious, I'm super sorry. A trauma bond is when you have these issues, you come together to discuss them and you hold each other in that space of negativity and trauma. And so it builds on the negativity and trauma. So you, you, it's kind of like victimhood where you serve each other with, yeah, I had this too. Oh my God, isn't that awful? Yeah, that sucks. And you keep going into the negative space of it. The healing part, which is what I'm experiencing with Ken, is when the dragon comes and I say to him, oh my God, there's a dragon over there. He cuts the shit out of it. He slays it for me. Huh? Have you guys noticed that some of my videos have gone missing over here on YouTube? That is because I am slowly moving them over to locals where I can actually host them without the risk of getting in trouble. If you are not aware, many creators are starting to move over to places like locals, rumble, etc. Because YouTube is not really a free speech platform. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting access to videos that are no longer available here, make sure that you come and join us over on Locals. The link will be in the video description down below. Supporters get access to their own exclusive videos that are no longer available to the public. So make sure you go to the link in the description and join us over there now. But anyway, guys, back to today's episode. And then he comes back to me and he allows me to be in that space, go through the pain. And instead of him contributing to it, he shows me a path to the light through it. You can share the space and the pain with somebody and they have evolved enough to guide you through it. I don't know about you gentlemen, but I feel like after watching that, I need to have a lie down. Okay, this is the type of, this is exactly why uh, men don't want to date older women is because they come with so much baggage and nonsense that that man is expected to take on. Okay, why on earth would you date a 40, 50 year old divorced woman or a single mother or whatever the case may be, when you can simply not do that? Okay, because this is the kind of nonsense that you have to put up with, right? You have to put up with all of this stuff. You have to, you know, you have to jump through a ridiculous amount of hoops for someone who is heavily traumatized by another man, right? So like you're playing cleanup for some other dude from her past essentially is what's happening here. It's a whole big thing. It was so obvious to my male viewers of what exactly happened here. I feel like I really don't have to say anything, but in all fairness, I had my female viewers who understood what this queen said. And if I say to them, don't you see the obvious of what men go through? They will probably say, what? What are you talking about? Okay, let me do my public service for my XX chromosome closed captioning requirements. Ladies, this is a perfect example of when men say, women use them as their own personal therapist. She even said that when her dragons come up, the guy is the one who goes in and slays it. Men are not replacements for professional therapists, but damn do women throw that in on them like a job requirement in any type of relationship. Oh, and to my uh, male viewers, if you are friend zoned and doing all this, type of work without getting anything in return, you really have little defense when you are labeled a stand-in platonic boyfriend. Don't get me wrong, as I do understand some men will play this role and require bedroom fun as payment. Hey, that's on all of you to each their own. My question is, do you think your own mental health is worth a decades plus post-war taco? How about no? I'd think about it, but that's just this gorilla. It could be argued that maybe a less cracked taco would be worth the effort, but that's a discussion for another time. Moving on. Statistics are an extremely important part of research, but you have to break down the statistic in order to get the full picture. I'm gonna use your comment, for example. So 70% of women over 40 file for divorce. That is a true fact, it's a stat. But why they're filing is not 100% for the reasons that you say. Many of these women file because they're forced at it. Their hand is forced. The man has left, they've been living separate lives and they just wanna move on. 
I can tell you firsthand from the work that I do that many women, their men have gone off living with somebody else and refuses to file. We have to assume that a lot of this has to do with money, with not wanting to pay alimony, they've worked for half their money, not to mention that sometimes women are working too. But in these cases, the woman has to file because the man refuses to. Sometimes the woman files just because they're over the relationship. There's nothing super bad or wrong, but it just hasn't gone well. Wow, guys, I can't wait to get into something as serious as marriage with a woman. And she's going to divorce me and try and take half of my crap because she feels like it and it's just not going well. These people are absolute clowns, okay? And I don't believe her that the majority of these cases is just the men refusing to file because they've moved somewhere else and they're now living with another woman. I think that this woman is probably speaking from a very small uh, select number of cases that she's quite heavily biased towards, okay? But let's be honest about it. Most of these divorces are initiated by women for the latter of what she said, which is they feel like it and they just don't want to be with him because they don't feel like being with him anymore. So they will label him as some awful person. They will say that he's abusive. Mind you, this is the exact same thing that happens with you know, regular relationships where a marriage isn't even in place. Like for those of you guys who are watching this right now and you've been in a relationship or two or three, right? And you haven't been married, you might understand that it's pretty commonplace for women to just completely lie about you after the breakup and say that you're an awful person and throw around some reason that she broke up with you that wasn't even actually the reason and makes no sense. This is something that women do because they're allowed to by law. They can initiate a divorce. They can take half of your crap, if, on, if not all of it, and your kids because they feel like it and they can file for it under what's called irreconcilable differences thanks to the government. Fantastic stuff. Sometime a woman files because of DV. And other times, yes, women do file because there was an affair and they are leaving to be with said person. Women file for divorce 70% plus of the time. Seriously, did the guy put a gun to her head to do it? She started off with the most vague explanation and then started saying the least likely scenario first. And the part where she says women were forced to do it, really? You know what? You know what? Wow. Sorry there, Colleen, but your uh, buttering up BS isn't really going to fly. I'm not saying the comment she is referring to is the top reason either. Usually the most common reasons stated of why women put in for divorce in multiple online articles, I'd link a few in the description by the way, is financial reasons. Other reasons that you will find commonly are incompatibility and infidelity. I want to throw another one in that is a spin-off when many women say, I want to find myself. I will call that one self-centered selfishness. Do I have to explain why? How could I it? Why say it? Say it! It's because that reason is all about me, me, me. Ladies, men for the most part understand that marriage is hard work and sacrifice. They put in long hours at work to provide for their family. Where are those uh, videos from men saying they put in for a divorce to find themselves? Oh yeah, they don't do that because their wife and children come first. What do you ladies think? Those men wouldn't rather uh, be home with their children than working overtime to keep the lights on? A part of patriarchy. I don't know if you're noticing a theme, patriarchy. But of that 70%, I'm willing to bet it is a small percent of that 70% are women who cheated. So there's a bigger picture in the stats that you have to look at. Surveys and research and statistics are extremely important for knowing and understanding patterns. For example, the survey that Dr. Kathy, therapist Rebecca and myself conducted, we are going to break down and get statistics out of it. In that, there's going to be reasons, understandings, and you're gonna break down. So you'll have a statistic like this, but within that statistic, you'll have a breakdown of what's and why's and how's. This is crucial for research. As much as some people don't like statistics, having these types of things are why or how people write research papers. This is how books get written. These are very important because it shows a pattern. Now in today's society, things are gonna be very different than 50 years ago, correct? Yeah. 
And until we do the research and understand the patterns behind things, we can't really understand how to help or really dive deep into these situations. This queen is going to conduct surveys for statistics. Here's one key thing about surveys. They are based on what people say and what they are willing to admit. We already know that women are just as unfaithful as men, if not more so. But more important than that, let's call a spade a spade. During a divorce or breakup, women overwhelmingly have a drive for their friends and family to see them as the victims regardless of what they did. I am willing to bet the percentage of women who were unfaithful during their marriage that will deny it is far higher than the percentage of women who are willing to admit it. In fact, even women who uh, go immediately into another relationship after their divorce will lie and say it was pure coincidence she met her new serious relationship only weeks after her divorce. It's videos like this that try to picture the women who are breaking up the families as forced to do it that make men automatically put it in the uh, butt white category. Oh yeah, those modern day victims are forced to break up their families. The funny thing is, the 30% of divorces that are put in by men must have a viable reason considering they are about to lose half of everything for putting in for that divorce. And anybody who cares about seeing patterns in psychology, they'll understand that this is needed. It's a very important part. I don't understand what this woman expects to do. Okay, if you, this is exactly like insulin audits just said, right? If you expect to go out there and survey women just by asking them and get accurate data, you are in for a shock, madam. Or maybe she won't be in a shock because she'll just take it all at face value. But these women will lie. Guys, there have been studies conducted, right, trying to ascertain, for example, what women find attractive. And the difference between what women say and what they actually find attractive is astronomical. If you think that women aren't going to lie about their divorce circumstances, you are out of their mind. You are out of your mind. It is absolutely crazy that you would just conduct it. I'm assuming, right, that this woman's going to just ask these women you know, why it is exactly that they're filing for their particular divorce and she's going to mark it down as that. And she's not going to factor in people who are straight up lying because that's what these surveys never do. They never factor into account the people who are lying. And it's just going to be absolute nonsense, right? And this is how you wind up with ridiculous statistics of men being awful or we're just terrible people because of things that I can't say here on YouTube when oftentimes these things are just fabricated because these women are trying to save face because, you know, it's easier to lie and appear as though you're the victim on the other end of things. Craziness. It's a very important part. So anytime you read a statistic, anytime I even say a statistic, understand that there are things behind the statistics now, the stat itself can be very important. Like, for example, only about two to 3% of people who leave to be with their affair partner actually make it past the 10 year mark. This is an important statistic to just understand and know that oftentimes when you fantasize this greater life with your affair partner, it often doesn't happen that way. Wow, genius advice here. Am I the only one, guys, whenever I watch these videos, it seems as though they're just incredibly patronizing, like she's talking to someone as though she would talk to a child. Statistics are important. It's like, yes, I know that statistics are important. Videos like this are straight up ridiculous. Okay, but yes, of course, your affair doesn't work out because these guys aren't going to want to date you long term. These men who these women are having affairs with and cheating with, they don't want to have a long-term relationship with you typically. This is what happens with, uh, it's called monkey branching, when women line up a relationship after their existing one. So they won't leave their current relationship until they have a second one lined up. But oftentimes, particularly these women who are older or have to go through a divorce in order to get there, uh, these guys on the other side, they don't want to date you. They're just looking for a bit of fun. So you can return to the streets, but they are going to be a cold place for you to be, madam. This stat you can break down all you want, but it doesn't really matter because the larger majority of what you need to understand is although you think that life will be better with this person, most of the time, that's not true. That's a stat that you can just use the stat in itself to really get and understand the answer and the pattern and why it's important to understand. 
Okay, here I agree with her. Notice, ladies, I am not this one-sided blockheaded gorilla. Or at least I'm trying not to be. Very few people who leave their marriages for their new partner make it far for the long term. Now, statistically, I can't prove what I'm about to say, but many women have stated this in their videos previously. That is, the majority, or at least half of the women who leave their marriages for emotional reasons usually have a backup relationship already in place. In fact, ladies, men have a term for this, and they call it monkey branching. That's how common it is. Another thing I want to touch on here, since she mentioned psychology, okay, the favorite phrase so many women use as an example of toxicity is a form of emotional uh, roughness, we'll say. Okay. I want to ask this key question, since uh, that type of toxicity is uh, verbally based, does that mean uh, that constant nagging is definitely under that category? Damn, skip me. I mean, those poor kings that get told, you don't make me happy even after they did everything asked of them, or the constant no let up stream of criticism or persistent annoying finding of faults laid at a man's feet. Oh, it's just too much to bear. I am tearing up just thinking about the guy who just got home uh, from an extra shift getting barked at by his wife complaining he wasn't there to take out the trash. <laughs> So as far as to answer the second question you have, what childhood trauma is causing all these women to cheat? You need to understand that 70% of these women are not cheating. That's not a true statement or fact. But as far as answering why women are cheating more in record numbers, my dog is going crazy because the gardener is here. Sorry, I had to hold him. He was going crazy. So as far as what's causing all these women to stray, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Yeah, of course. And now we turn it around to be men's fault, right? It's the men's fault that women are cheating. It's their childhood trauma, blah, blah, blah. Is one is the great movement of the 60s and women having more rights, being in the workplace more. And the major factor is going to be social media. It's far easy to walk that road when there's tons of apps that will hide it. With married men and women being around each other in the workplace, there's going to be more opportunity. And with social media, there's going to be even more. I think also on top of that, there's a lot of things that romanticize cheating. Books, movies, novels, all of these things will romanticize the idea of having a lover on the side and turning it into a long-term relationship. So I think just in general, there's just a lot of things. But definitely, it isn't the 70% of women who are filing are having an affair. That is simply not truth. And any person who's promoting that as true, stop following them immediately. They are not telling the truth. Again, I agree with most of what she just said. The rundown points, social media, ding, that's a big one. Novels and entertainment, romanticizing it. Again, big props there. We have found some common ground here. The movement of the 60s giving women liberation, yes, to a certain point, but that is tied into the more intimacy partners a woman has, the lower her chances of pair bonding. I can agree there. Being in the workplace, I see as 50-50 because if she is in a busy job, she will have less time to mess around. One big factor she didn't mention was boredom. Women are all about fifis, and if her man is busy working and she has too much time on her hands, well, she's gonna fill her hands, uh, among other things, with some uh, new sausage and sour cream. I'm this is exactly why I find it funny when people kind of advocate for social media and they're like, man, you know, why can't I just keep posting bikini photos even though I'm in a relationship? It's clearly for myself, right? Or I just want to go out clubbing with my girlfriends or have a girl's trip because I just need some time for myself and all of this nonsense, right? Is there is so much opportunity for these women to cheat, but what they do is they downplay it, right? They downplay all of the attention that they're trying to get and all of the validation they're trying to get online. They downplay their girls' trips and things like this. And then men get cheated on, right? But if we say anything about these things, well, then we're creepy, we're insecure, right? We shouldn't be in a relationship. We have issues. We should go to therapy because we don't want our girlfriends and wives out here doing this degenerate nonsense. It's insane. But guys, we are going to be leaving today's episode there. As always, remember to leave your thoughts and your comments. Make sure you take care of yourselves and I'll be seeing you all in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.